So this video is going to be the complete micro mesh uh, of this pen blank. This is a cigar barrel lower and I've got it to a rough stage here on the lathe. I finished it with a skew so it's actually pretty flat and smooth. Uh, it's not going to take a lot of sanding which is the ideal situation but uh, I just wanted to do a quick video. This could be boring if you already do this and that's fine but uh, for those of you who don't use micro mesh or wet sanding I wanted to do this video for you. So first thing I'm going to do is chuck it up. Uh, I'll say that the, the key here, especially if you have an acrylic blank or a fragile blank, is when you put this in here you want to slide your tailstock in very carefully and I'm, I'm between centers here for all my wet sanding. If I were to jam this tailstock and hit this end, it's a great way to crack it. Um, if you don't crack it, it's a great way to stretch out the very end and it'll, it'll ultimately mess up your pen because it won't line up uh, on the parts. So you want to be careful right from the start here. This lathe is set up for wet sanding, that's all I use it for. So I've got this extended out pretty far. Uh, I'm going to lock it in place, you can see it's still loose. So I'll just barely snug it up, lock it down, and I've got some fresh clean water here. Uh, I only do two or three pens or parts at a time and then I'll, I'll rinse this water. And the reason being is the whole purpose of the water is to keep your blank clean, keep the dust off of it. So if you're if you're rinsing with dirty water and putting dirty water up on the blank, you're kind of defeating the purpose here. So uh, I'm turning at 970 RPM. Right there. And I'm gonna start here with 600. This is what I start with in most cases. There's, there's some times where I'll need to be a little more abrasive, but uh, a lot of times 600 is the start, sometimes even 800 if it, it's really smooth. So this, this blank is pretty flat and smooth. I don't need to really shape anything with this sandpaper. So I'm just gonna basically go over the whole thing a couple of times. I'm gonna keep it wet. And you're, like I said, you're keeping the debris away from the blank with the water and also you're, you're keeping the heat down, which is a very, very important thing. So now just by feeling that, there's, there's nothing there. We can even take a look. Uh, if I had any little chip outs or any rough spots, that would be the time to do it with that 600. Uh, but you got to remember, you're taking off a lot of material, uh, a lot in regards to this sandpaper process. Um, so you want to be real careful with that. Next, I have a little chart that I keep up here. I'll refer to this a couple of times. Next I'm going to use my first grit, actually I take that back, I'm going to go ahead and use my 800, which isn't on my chart. And keep in mind, 800, uh, it's a foam back paper that I get from an auto body supply. It's made for wet dry purposes. Uh, there again, it's going to be relatively quick. And I want to make sure I keep it nice and wet. And again, at this stage, you can change the shape and the thicknesses, so you want to be real careful with how much, you're, uh, how much pressure you're applying and how long you're going for. So that's pretty good there. So now, now I'm going to look at my micro mesh chart here, and, and it's good to keep handy just so you can refer to it, uh, although you will know it by heart after a little while. First, number 1500, rust colored. And the colors are all pretty easy to tell. What we've got, we've got rust, and then green, and then black. I'm just kind of putting them in order here. Uh, then we got tan, wine brown, teal, which if Corey's watching, I know that's Corey's favorite color. Uh, then we got purple, royal blue, and finally gray at 12,000. So I'm going to go through these grits and my main focus is to use each grit to take out any scratches from the grit before and keep the blank constantly wet and rinsed. So you can do this a couple of ways. I don't like the underneath way. Um, it does hold more water, but it's just, it's just a matter of comfort. I tend to hold it right on top like this. and. 
by sitting here, I can see the water drooping down, so I know that the blank is still wet. If you ever take the paper off, I should say the, the pad off and it, there's no water there, you've gone too long without it. So you need to, to shorten it up. And I'll, sometimes I'll do a five count uh, to make sure I don't run out of water. But it's really a matter of preference of how much you want to do this. And in a sense, the more the better, but you know, at some point you're going to be, not be able to improve it much more. So I want to do that. And you can kind of see that's glitching and it's just I need to tighten up my tailstock a little more. And the reason is, I don't want to over tighten it in the beginning, I'd rather have to tighten it up a little more. So, I'm going to use this 1500, probably one of the longer grits that I use, uh, because it's the most abrasive micro mesh um, grit, but it's the least, it's the most abrasive, let me try again, it's the most aggressive micro mesh grit, but the least as far as uh, my my higher grits like my six and eight hundred that I, I use to shape and do the initial buff on this. So I'm gonna do this for a few seconds here. And some guys, you know, they'll touch it for three seconds and be done, and that's fine. Uh, it's totally up to you how you want to do it. So what I like to do after this 1500 is turn off the lathe. And then I want to dry this. So if you have a towel, you can use a towel. I'm just using my finger to kind of squeegee the water off. When the water's on there, it'll look perfect, even if it's not. So you want to get it dry and then look for any imperfections, any, any major scratches or holes. And that's your time to, to take care of that right then. So this thing looks pretty good. So I'm just going to start going through my, my grits here. That was my 1500. Here's my 1800 green. And one thing I'll tell you about these micro mesh pads is they come in a two by four size like this. And I'll cut them in half and use a set for a couple of months and then switch them out. Now, I say a couple of months, I'm turning a lot of pens right now, so uh, I go through them quicker than certain times of the year. If you just turn the occasional pen, a set could last you a year or more. Uh, it just depends on how much you use them. So I'm flipping it over, making sure I get a good rinse on it, get all any debris off of there. I can see that my water coming off of here is pretty clear, and that's because it's not taking off a whole lot of material. But this water was clear when we started, and it is starting to get a little murky already. So. Um, now going on to black, which is 2400, and these are padded, so you can you can put a little pressure with your finger. You don't want to you don't want to really crank down on it because you're likely to break or crack something or slip. Uh, but you can put a little pressure on it and give it a little force. But basically, I'm just going to go back and forth and make sure I keep it good and cool with the water and clean with the water. So you can see it even throws off a little there when I get done. So that's my 2400. Now the tan is 3200. So we're getting up pretty high, pretty fast. This tan is uh, not going to take off a lot of material. So you'll see the water that comes off of here is very clean as far as what it's taken off your blank. You're, you're already beginning to be in that polishing stage, uh, in my opinion. Now I'm gonna go with this wine brown. Make sure my, my pad is fresh and clean here. And I'm just gonna go back and forth a few times. And if I wanna do that stop and check it again, I'm gonna to start to see that this thing already is shining a little bit. When I stopped with the 1500 in the beginning, uh, and I wiped it dry, it had a little haze to it, and that's because it wasn't as polished. When you start getting up to this grit at 3600, you're, you're polishing here as well, so you're not really shaping or taking anything off, you're just, you're getting it down there, getting it polished nicely. Uh, so now I'm on to teal, which is 4000. And there again, just gonna keep going back the same way. Make sure I keep my pad clean and wet. This blank at no time will heat up. It'll always be cool with this water on it. 
So it's up to you how long you want to do each stage. Some sometimes it seems like I can go longer just out of habit. And sometimes I'm four or five seconds on each stage. So that's the teal. I'm gonna now go to the purple. Oops, my last two. Now the purple here. The purple is 6,000, so I'm really in the polishing mode here. So I'm going to jump from purple to blue. Blue is 8,000, which I don't know what the equivalent would be, but it feels softer than a lot of paper. So I mean, it's pure polishing right now. So I don't need a whole lot of uh, pressure or, or force because I'm not shaping it at all. I'm just polishing this thing. And the blank is about the size, the width of this. So if I just give it a little turn here, I'm covering the whole thing the whole time. And then lastly, we're going to go to our gray, which is 12,000. Uh, basically, it feels like a cloth. I mean, the stuff is just not a grid at all. It's a polishing, it's a polishing pad. So. This is going to give it that nice shine. I still want to keep the pad wet and clean, uh, even though it's not taking off a lot of material. I just don't want any imperfections in that finish, and that polish is how I'm going to do that. So, that's it. That's how I do the micro mesh. Uh, a lot of people at this stage will take a paper towel and a product like this high gloss or some other plastic polish or finisher, I don't do that ever. Uh, and the reason being is I've just polished to 12,000, which is probably, if I had to guess, four or five times softer than a paper towel. So if I use a paper towel or a cloth or something to put on a polish like that, I'm actually roughing up my finish. Um, this stuff will stay shiny. Once I dry this, it's going to be shiny and look awesome and it's ready to go. So that's it. It's a very simple process. If you have any questions on what to do, just let me know. Uh, the way my setup is, I turn on the, the bigger lathe here. I put everything on the rack here. When I get this rack full, I'll stop, turn them or uh, polish them all up, sand them and be done and then start the whole process again. So just find a system that works for you and uh, you'll get nice shiny uh, shiny finishes on all your tubes and you'll be good to go. Thanks for watching this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that now. Thanks for watching.